Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and there are many different genres of video games. Shooty shooty bang bang, put the ball in the designated area. Virtual babysitter, follow the waypoint marker. How many potions can you carry? Japanese teenagers, kick your face in. Gas, 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 gonna step on the gas. Remove the doors and the toilets. I hate sex. What? What the f ADHD. I can't let go of the past. I can't let go of my gentleman's region. The police are on their way. So let's explore this iceberg together. At the top of the iceberg is the super popular mainstream games, and American high school simulators are big business. First person shooter games got popular once Doom hit in 1993, and since then, Quake, Halo, Call of Duty, Overwatch, these sorts of games have remained super popular. Why? Running around shooting dudes in the face embodies the whole spirit of video games. You've got the fantasy element, because if you tried doing this in real life, the police would give you a stern talking to. There is an element of skill coupled with the treadmill of self-improvement that is gained by continuous play. Well, unless it's an EA game, then all you need is... <laughs> Plus you have the competitive element, and men are genetically wired to be competitive, something academics have known for years. So to have an arena of global competitive fantasy skill based action, it's no wonder why so many men flock to FPS games. I, I wrote a blog post a while ago about why I f***ing hate video games, because this is what it does, it appeals to like the male fantasy. A some of these games take competition to the ultimate level, with professionally organised tournaments pitting the world's top virgins against each other to see who will be crowned King Virgin. But these games are also popular with online streamers like Red Freddy Mercury, Blue Party Starter and Alphabet Man. Another genre sitting at the top of the iceberg is sports games. So if you want to kick a ball, hit a ball, throw a ball, hit a ball in a different way, or do whatever the hell is going on in this footage, well, EA Sports and 2K Games have you covered. The biggest sports games are all mainstream stuff, closely followed by more homoerotic sports, although every so often, something like a Wii Sports will come along and find mainstream success. Back when video games were more two-dimensional, although you had your serious sports games, you also had sports games that were more based on fun rather than being a serious simulation. Not all of these worked out though. I mean, look at Buster Douglas on the Mega Drive. It's like trying to fight Fist of the North Star. Just what the fuck are you meant to do against that? Either way, sports games remain a popular mainstream gaming genre for mostly the same reasons that FPS shooters do, and that's competitive fantasy skill-based action. And I don't expect that to change, no matter how much EA attempt to poison the genre by cramming it as, with as many microtransactions and loot boxes as they possibly can. Come on, EA. Stop it. Get some help. The last of the big three mainstream genres at the top of the iceberg, and there is one thing that links these three genres together at the top. That link is streaming on platforms like Twitch and YouTube. FPS games are streamed by show-offs. Sports games are streamed by people who are marginally more mature. And sandbox games are streamed by... <coughs> The online coverage is the worst thing about this genre. Everyone likes to build stuff or go on a rampage in a virtual world, but for reasons that are still unknown to anyone with an IQ over 25, people that stream sandbox games seem to think that screaming continually for the duration of their streams somehow makes them funny. But there really isn't a lot more to say about sandbox games, so now let's dive under the water a little bit and start looking at genres that are still popular but are more enthusiast rather than mainstream. So what's an adventure game? Think Uncharted. 
God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider-Man, Ratchet and Clank, Ghost of Tsushima. A game where you take on the role of a person and embark on an action-based adventure. Something else to know here, and that is this genre, is almost entirely owned by Sony. I don't mean they actually own the rights to it and it all just lives in Jim Ryan's pocket, but it might as well, because every example I just gave is a Sony first-party PlayStation game. No one else even comes close. Well, apart from Sega's Yakuza series. I, I wrote a blog post a while ago about why I f***ing hate video games because this is what it does, it appeals to, like the male fantasy. That's not strictly true either. Resident Evil has made a great return to form in the last few years, but still, when you think action adventure, you think PlayStation. Assassin's Creed games used to be good, but then Ubisoft thought that great game design was a billion different fetch quests, so it's just a shit show now. So, how do you tell the difference between a roleplay game and an action-adventure game? Considering these days there's a lot of crossover between the genres in terms of gameplay elements, it's like trying to describe the difference between cartoons and anime. You just know it when you see it. Skyrim. So when there's a fantasy setting, swords and magic and a huge focus on character stats, chances are you're playing an RPG. But the big divide here is East and West. RPGs developed in the Western world like The Witcher or Skyrim tend to be grittier and borrow a lot of style from Dungeons and Dragons. Whereas Asian roleplay games get the sub-genre name JRPG and normally feature anime style characters and storylines that are much wackier. Are you a blue haired man? being accompanied by a scantily clad girl that you suspect is under 18 years old and on a quest to stop some super devil demon monster from plunging the world into darkness, then you're probably playing JRPG, probably Dragon Quest. A bit lower down now and we start to get genres that have a little bit less mainstream appeal but have dedicated fan base. One on one fighting games are exactly that. Not the super popular genre they once were but attract a large enough group of people that championships like EVO have been set up to allow the best players in the world to compete against each other. Street Fighter is still king although debate is split over which version is best. You have people like me who are correct in saying that Street Fighter 5 is not only the most up to date game in the series but it's also the best one, has the tightest controls and is balanced almost perfectly. But you also have these people that just can't let go of the past and claim that Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is actually the best in the series. These people are wrong and just enjoy special moves being called super art. Smash Brothers also has a very large following. Not sure why because it's not even that good. No! You there is a small sub-genre to be found here, and that's 2D fighting games, where the games still use traditional sprites for characters. Games like Blaz Blue, Fighting Climax, and Aquapaza still do things the old way. But most games in the genre use modern methods. Dead or Alive, King of Fighters, Tekken, all enjoy decent-sized fan bases. This is obviously because the best fighting game ever created is still on holiday. But once Sega put out the next Virtua Fighter game, Game, everything else in the genre will be obsolete. It's not an opinion, it's a fact. Kart racer, serious racer, arcade racer, speed racer. Driving games take many forms, so let's have a look. Looks like we got ourselves an old fashioned Sega Rally Championship. Long, medium, right. Over, jump. 
For the serious racing fan, we have Gran Turismo. When you play this with a proper force feedback wheel, you're basically driving a real car. So much so that it's actually endorsed by the FIA. But even more prestigious than an official endorsement from the governing body is the endorsement from Lewis Hamilton. That's because he actually met Jeremy Clarkson. So that makes this the greatest racing game in the world. There is also this game called Forza, but that's not important. Anyway, talking about less serious driving games, we have arcade style driving. This is more based on fun driving mechanics like over the top drifting. Recently, we've had Hot Shots Racing while we wait for another Ridge Racer game, but we can't forget the amazing series that is Initial D, or the grandfather of the genre. <laughs> Let's not forget kart racers. Mario Kart stands as king in a land filled by awful mascot go-kart racing games. So not much of an achievement, really. At this point, we are now deep enough down the iceberg that we've hit genres that don't really have mainstream appeal, but do have large enough dedicated fan bases. Scott Pilgrim, Alex Kidd Remake, Streets of Rage 4, games that use old school gameplay mechanics are normally an old series of games buffed up to high definition. But I think you could extend this genre just to the act of playing old games on a new system, or even the use of dedicated systems like the NES Classic Mini. Why people buy these dedicated systems remains a complete mystery. Even the worst PCs that people throw away can play NES, SNES and Mega Drive games just as competently as any of these classic mini systems can. My fucking iPhone case can play NES games. The fucking case. In fact, whatever device you're watching this video right now on, that can play NES games. Even smart TVs can have RetroArch installed in them these days. Classic mini consoles are are only for people with zero technical knowledge. So if you have one of these things, congratulations, you're an idiot. What was once a very popular genre has taken a huge demotion in the last few years. 15 years ago, holding plastic guitars was commonplace, but now a dance dance revolution mat is something you actively have to seek out. And DDR was hugely popular during the early 2000s, as too was Guitar Hero. There was even room in the market for smaller titles like Pop and Music, Space Channel 5, and Samba de Amigo. People loved pressing buttons in time to music, but then, like always, Ways, publishers couldn't stop milking the genre with endless sequels and everyone got bored. A slight revival of the genre has happened recently thanks to the VR headsets and Beat Saber, but I highly doubt we're going to get back to a point where Donkey Konga becomes relevant again. Another genre that used to enjoy mild mainstream success but has fallen out of favour is the simulation game. SimCity was a great series that EA managed to mess up by adding stupid DRM policies and overcomplicating the gameplay. The Sims was something lots of people enjoyed, then EA had the fantastic idea of releasing the latest version but with most of the items missing but then sending them back to players as overpriced DLC. Densha to Go is never going to be popular outside of Japan so you can forget that. Flight Simulator gets a lot of press coverage, but let's be honest, no one actually enjoys flight sim games, they're just pretty to look at. So only one simulation game keeps this genre from completely collapsing, and that's Sega's Football Manager series. If you have no interest in football, there is almost no possibility that you're going to get any fun out of this. Fortunately for Sega, plenty of people like football, and also fancy themselves as a footballing mastermind, so the House of Sonic makes a killing on these games. Advance Wars, Starcraft, Age of Empires, that's the sort of strategy games people talk about just before the person listening falls asleep. It's you, using your resources provided to outwit your opponent, normally in some sort of warfare scenario. Very engaging video games, which normally take up a lot of time to play. There will always be fans of these, but due to the length of playtime required, they always stay low down the iceberg. Although the trading card subgenre started to pick up a lot 
lot of followers recently. Games like Hearthstone, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon TCGO are basically digital versions of Magic the Gathering, but with less virginity. Thirty years ago, this genre would have been far higher up the list, but now lives down here, deep under the water. Games like R-Type, Galaga, Pop and Twimby, Ikaruga still have fan bases with itchy trigger fingers who love nothing more than to blast enemies with spaceships, but the days of this being a mainstream genre are well gone. A shame really, because these titles are pure gaming fun, and titles like Space Invaders did so much to bring gaming to a mainstream audience in the first place. Place. I suppose really FPS shooters are the natural evolution of this genre so in a way the raw gameplay element of shoot the thing still lives on but has just taken on a different form now. Okay, now we are well and truly in the depths of the gaming genres. We are so far away from mainstream gaming that people that play Minecraft and Fortnite are probably not even aware these genres even exist. So what is a visual novel? Well, it's software that you run on your games machine and read the story that is accompanied by illustrations, normally manga. In Japan, these titles are big business and they love them over there. Outside Japan, not so much and very, very few games games ever get any sort of coverage. Doki Doki Literature Club and that pigeon boyfriend game thing are really the only examples of the many tens of thousands that are out in the wild. You read the page, you press the button, the next page appears. Rinse and repeat. Every so often you'll get a choice to progress the story in a different direction, but it's mainly just reading. This is barely even a game. Hell, this is barely even entertainment. If you told someone you had played a visual novel game where it was a bunch of pigeons in a school, they would think you just played a weird game. If you told someone you were playing a dating simulator where you had to talk to anime girls to get them to like you, they would probably actively avoid you in the future. But like visual novels, dating games are pretty big into Japan. Games like Love Plus, Tokumiki Memorial and Tenshitachi No Go Go are absolute otaku fodder. Just in case you're not sure what a dating game game is, well it's very much like a visual novel but normally you have a lot more choices to make and the stories are based entirely around trying to get a girlfriend. So for the people that play these games they are definitely fantasy. The final entry on this list, and this one's a bit fuzzy because although it does get called a genre, it's really just a style of game. Bishoujo games basically means pretty girl games. So a Bishoujo game is any game that is based around pretty anime girls. So it could be a rhythm game, could be a simulation game, it could be anything. I, I wrote a blog post a while ago about why I f***ing hate video games. Because this is what it does, it appeals to like the male fantasy. Drop it! It could be just an innocent dancing game like Hatsune Miku, or it could be shooting girls with your love gun like in Gal Gun. Either way, these games are closely associated with dating games as many Japanese dating sims all feature pretty anime girls. Now, there is a sub-genre here too, and that's erogy games, which means erotic games. Basically, take a bishoujo game and remove the girl's clothing. You have to go to a very specific area of the internet to find these, and showing footage of these games is not something YouTube likes people doing. Anyway, with that, we've hit the very bottom of the iceberg. That's it for now. Abba. Thanks for watching, guys. A like, subscribe, and comment are very much appreciated. Plus, if you like what you saw, here are some links on the screen now to some of my other videos that I've made that you might like.